What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Seeds of Change. I'm your host, Matt Mills. I hope all is well. I hope that you had a good week. I hope that you're having a productive day whenever you're listening to this. Thank you for the continued support, for the comments, the likes, the subscribes, and even you sharing and just letting me know how much you enjoyed. I greatly appreciate it, and I appreciate all your support. Uh, We're going to get right into a few family announcements. I do want to mention the Christmas Toy Drive that Unified Network Initiative Organization is having. They are accepting donations until December 14th. So you have a few more days to get in your donations, whether that's financial, whether you have toys that you want to drop off, whatever that may be. uh, Please contact and reach out if you do have donations by the 14th. The flyer will be present on the screen. You can reach out to Elder Mills. You can reach out to Bishop Mills. You can reach out to uh, Elder Vivian Holmes to make donations. Like I said, you have until the 14th. So please, any donations that you have will be appreciated. Um, I do want to also acknowledge Elder Mills for the opportunity to be in our line and, and being a part of Spiritual Breakfast. It was a blessing to share. And you will hear some of what was shared on the line if you did miss it. So stay tuned. And before I go any further, I do want to um, send my prayers out to the members of First Baptist Church of Darby, including myself, as well as uh, the Brown family uh, for their loss. Um, So I just ask that you continue to keep my church and keep your family in prayer. Um, during this time, I ask you to continue to keep the Merriweather family in prayer and also keep the Mays family in prayer um, in reference to uh, their loss also. And the Second Baptist Church of Media Church family um, during this time. The word for today will be part of what was shared during the spiritual breakfast uh, line. It was talking about during this time and during this season, remembering how important Jesus is. And I hope that you listen and you are blessed and remember that Jesus is at the center of everything that we do, that that if we keep him first, we will not be needing or in lack of anything. Jesus will make sure that our joy is full. So if we're willing to keep our focus and our faithfulness on Jesus Christ, We will be okay. So stay tuned for the word. You know, let me know in the comments and please just reach out if it does bless you and encourage you. Like I hope it does, like it encouraged me. And I hope that you continue to be blessed. We'll talk to you later. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh huh. I will say for future reference. Y'all don't have to do all that one, so. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, I was tasked, or should I say, I chose the letter J. One, because I wanted to go first before them. And secondly, uh, given the, the season that I'm in and the reminders that I keep getting about what should be central in our daily life and our spirituality, I couldn't pass on J. Because everything that I read and everything I study now in school is all about how Jesus Christ should be central. So when I got first pick, I was like, how could I not, with the convictions I feel, go with Jay for Jesus? Everything starts with Jesus. The season that we're celebrating is about our Savior being born. So there's no other word that begins with Jay that I could pick but Jesus. The word that we're talking about today in general, joy, is an emotion invoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. Keep that in mind, and I won't be long, and you'll see why I read that. The scripture that came to me, the one of the scriptures that came to me, and it's probably the simplest one I could go with, is Romans 5, 8, where it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And to really think about a creator 
who was born to a virgin simply to redeem people who did not know who he was. Now, we can make the argument the chosen people, of course, had an idea that a promise was coming. But I'm talking about them other folks that weren't weren't of Jewish descent, that had no desire of this Christ that we now worship. He came for them. To think about that he came for me. When there was a period in my life, I had no clue who he was. And and I might have been young, but that's the truth. I, I was in church. And I saw people singing, but you don't necessarily connect what they're doing. And I'm sure we all have a moment in our lives of why we were still. And the reason I it encourages me is because we, we deal with a lot of people. We encounter a lot of people, whether relatives, friends, you encounter them. But you serve a God that loves you regardless. And it encourages me because we all, you know, have a roller coaster in our lives. We feel great. We feel bad. We feel healthy. We feel sick. We feel confident. We feel low. You can pick it. We all have we all have a roller coaster experience. And I would like to jump to a, a pretty sound conclusion that if God could love me while I was a sinner. Now that I'm his, I'm pretty sure he's going to love me in whatever state that I'm in. So that is enough to encourage me to know that if I keep him centered, when I have wayward thoughts or confusions and get on my own plan, even when Christ has to put me through a trial, he still loves me. Wherever I might find myself in any state, I can feel his warm embrace. To me, that creates joy. That is an emotion that is invoked by well-being because I can feel good in my present state knowing that I know at least one person or one being loves me. Like I said, I won't be long. The second scripture I want to share, and it's in John chapter 16, 24. It says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask. And you will receive that your joy may be full. Now, let's go back to the definition where I said it's emotion invoked by well-being, success, good fortune, or your desires. Jesus is saying, ask and you will receive that your joy is all encompassing because it means success. Well-being is the state that you're in. Physical, mental, emotional, you'll be well. Good fortune in being you will receive favor. And on top of that, you will receive your desires. And not only is that what joy means, he said it'll be full. It won't be lacking. You won't be in need of anything. If you ask and receive, your joy will be full. For me, that's enough to have joy because I'm not the most happy person. I don't smile all the time. I don't exude personality. But on the inside recently, as I watch things start to happen in my life, I realize the joy that they speak of. I realize that the favor I experience in a career that I don't understand why I'm in it, I realize it might just be a vehicle for me to get the education I desire. I always wanted to be a doctor and I've had doubts of people trying to tell me that I couldn't do it, that I wasn't good enough to do it. And the opportunity presented itself cost free to obtain this degree. And you say, well, why are you pointing it out? It's a degree in pastoral counseling. And if you know that I work as a business analyst in a healthcare provider, but yet they covered it major. I desire to advance in my career and I find favor to where I was struggling to get promoted. I get promoted two times in the last year. Now, once again, I'm pointing this out because I understand that this job might not be my end goal, but this might be the season I need to be in it for me to obtain skills needed 
and to get the degree that I desired. The power of this scripture is the fact that because joy is all encompassing, if you take time to look at the things that happen in your life, The times where you should be frustrated, but you find peace and satisfaction. The times that you find advancement when it doesn't make sense. Where you experience favor and where you are, where it's illogical and people are trying to figure out why. Simply because your joy is full. We serve a Christ that came not only to restore life to you through salvation, but for you to have a good life, for you to have one of purpose and success. So when Jesus speaks on this joy being full, don't limit it to just feeling good. It is all encompassing that the joy that Jesus is promising is a life that you won't be able to explain. It's a life that's not limited to logic. It's a life that means whenever Christ wants to move on your behalf, He will step out of heaven and intercede like no one else can because that's the joy he promised you. So remember to walk in your your dominance and your your blessing to know that Christ created something in you that is unique and one of a kind. And when he promised to do this, when he gave you salvation, regardless of where you were or your acts of your life, salvation was given to you. And on top of that being given, he gave the Holy Spirit. And on top of that being given, he said, ask. You have power. Walk in your joy. Jesus came for you to have a life of purpose. But not to be upset. To be full of joy. God bless you.